Hey guys, Tyler here. The Protheans are an ancient alien race in the Mass Effect game series. Originally believed to have gone extinct over 50,000 years ago, at least one Prothean, Javik, survives in a cryogenic stasis pod and is woken up during the Reaper War in Mass Effect 3. At their height, the Protheans ruled a pan-galactic empire, encompassing several other spacefaring species. Many of their artifacts, ruins, and technology survive to the modern day, and it's a Prothean beacon that gives Commander Shepard their first vision of the Reapers in the first Mass Effect. Characterized by their four eyes, flanged voices, distinctive head shape, and other attributes, the Protheans are certainly one of the most intriguing Mass Mass Effect aliens from a biological standpoint. In this video, I'd like to examine the biology, history, and culture of the Protheans and compare them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. Like many other aliens in Mass Effect, the Protheans possess a bipedal stature. As I mentioned, they have two pairs of eyes, and each eye has dual pupils. Such pupils are actually not uncommon among Earth life, perhaps most notably the octopus. And while two pairs of eyes may seem like overkill for an alien species, keep in mind that some orders of Earth life, like spiders, have multiple pairs of eyes as well. In fact, Opabinia, a soft-bodied arthropod from the Cambrian period, had five eyes, meaning if life had followed its body plan, then terrestrial animals like tetrapods could now have more than two eyes as well. Protheans' eyes can peer through cloaked objects or entities, indicating that their vision may extend into optical resolutions beyond our normal range. Protheans also have three pairs of nostrils. Their heads are covered in a thick, layered carapace, and the skin around this carapace can range from a pale blue-gray to brown mottled with faint yellow spots. They also have three fingers on each hand and two widely separated toes on each foot. As I discussed in my video about the Corians, the concept of an alien species having only three fingers per hand may seem like a net loss, biologically speaking. But on the contrary, three-fingered aliens could theoretically retain most of the dexterity that we possess. Thus, the Protheans' extra eyes, notwithstanding, such a trait could act as a biological cost-saving measure, as their bodies would need to provide energy to fewer muscles. As far as their homeworld, the truth is, we don't exactly know where it was or what kind of star it orbited. However, we can make some inferences. It's quite possible that like the Krogan and arguably the Turians, the Protheans having a thick, chitin-like armor skin could indicate that they evolved on a planet orbiting a sun that is hotter than Sol, possibly an F-type star. Such stars are slightly shorter lived than G-type stars like the Sun, outputting more stellar radiation, including in bluer wavelengths. Thus, the Protheans, if they did evolve in such an environment, would have developed their tough exterior to protect against more harmful UV rays. Astrobiologists speculate that life on planets orbiting an F-type star would be subjected to between two and a half and seven times more UV radiation than the Sun puts out, which would have a profound effect on DNA molecules. And indeed, the Protheans are found to have had a unique quad-strand DNA structure, and it's theorized in-universe that the Protheans were resistant to low levels of ionizing radiation. So while this aspect of their evolutionary origin might be speculative on my part, I wouldn't be surprised if these conditions were present on the Prothean homeworld. Finally, one of the most impressive attributes of Prothean physiology is that they can exchange powerful memories through touch alone. By touching something or someone, a Prothean can recall a person's experiences and the history of a location. For example, Javik is able to sense that his room on the Normandy's Deck 4 was previously occupied by the Krogan Grunt. <laughs> 
The Protheans' sensory mechanism arose as the Protheans evolved to be hunters, and they needed to be thoroughly aware of their environment. The complex transfer of ideas even allows Protheans to learn a new skill or foreign language through a single touch. It's likely that such a process was engineered into the Prothean beacons, as the vision on Eden Prime could only be understood with the cipher, which instills Prothean cultural knowledge from archetypes to biological instinct and more into the mind of the recipient. The phenomenon of information and skills being exchanged electrochemically via touch is similar to the concept of psychometry, a type of extrasensory perception, or ESP. Proponents of psychometry assert that objects have energy fields that transfer information about the object's history. While this jibes pretty well with Prothean's biology and the role that mass effect fields play in the game's universe, in real life, psychometry is largely considered to be pseudoscience. I won't discuss every detail that we know about the Protheans' history, culture, and technology, but I do want to hit some of the highlights given the Protheans' central role in Mass Effect lore. It's unknown exactly when Prothean civilization arose and how long it lasted, but a Prothean comm device discovered on Fell Prime is dated to as early as 70,000 years ago. After achieving spaceflight, the Protheans discovered the ruins of a prior spacefaring race, the in Suanon. It is from their ruins that the Protheans learned about Mass Effect physics and developed faster-than-light technology. This gave them a significant advantage over their contemporaries, which the Protheans used to expand throughout the galaxy via the Mass Relay Network, making the Citadel their capital. Early on, the Protheans encountered a hostile machine race that threatened to overwhelm them. This led the Protheans to unite other organic races under a single empire, assimilating them into Prothean culture. This Prothean empire successfully held off the machines in a conflict known as the Metacon War. The Protheans also extensively observed numerous primitive species, including Asari, Hanar, humans, Quarians, Salarians, and Turians during this time. They cultivated species that they deemed to have potential, placing outposts on or near the primitives' homeworlds with their activities beyond the primitives' comprehension. This effectively proves the ancient aliens hypothesis in the Mass Effect universe, especially since we know that Protheans experimented on early humans. Furthermore, the Protheans were not above eating sentient species, regardless of chemical makeup. Indeed, as Javik states in his time, Hanar were boiled or fried, and Salarian kidney was considered a delicacy. Prothean no like you. In time, the Protheans planned to give the primitives a choice to join the Empire. Of course, it's one of those choices where it's like, join or die, but a cataclysm would disrupt these plans. Despite the Protheans' victory in the Metacon War, they were unprepared for the arrival of the Reapers, who were far more advanced than anything the Protheans had encountered. The Protheans' unified empire and single military doctrine meant that the Reapers could undermine the Prothean hierarchy and exploit their member race's weaknesses. They captured the Citadel and used the mass relays, both Reaper inventions we find out, to strike Prothean colonies. Their domain decimated, the Protheans hoped that the Reapers would ignore the primitives, and at least some Protheans would survive to form a new empire. Several Protheans went into cryogenic stasis, including on the planet Ilos, which the Reapers had missed. They were left in the care of a virtual intelligence, or VI, called Vigil, who responded to power drains by sacrificing quote-unquote non-essential personnel in order to conserve energy. After the Reapers finally withdrew from the Citadel Relay, Vigil woke a dozen Prothean scientists who pieced together what happened and sent a signal with Ilos's coordinates to beacons 
on other planets. They also found a way to sever the connection between the Keepers, bioengineered beings who maintain the Citadel systems, and the Reapers in an effort to trap the Reapers in dark space. Traveling through the Conduit, a miniature mass relay that connects Ilos to the Citadel, these Prothean scientists made a last-ditch effort to keep the Reapers from coming through the relay. The scientists likely died of starvation, and they had no way of knowing if their plan would even work. We see that their efforts were not in vain, as in Mass Effect 1, the Reaper Sovereign is unable to travel through the Citadel Relay, buying Commander Shepard and the crew of the Normandy SR-1 time to take control of the Citadel systems and defeat Sovereign. Javik is, of course, the only living Prothean that we directly interact with in Mass Effect. Having survived for 50,000 years in a cryopod on Eden Prime, Javik awakens to see that the primitives have indeed evolved after all, and they are in control of the Citadel and the Mass Relays. Javik is our primary connection to Prothean culture in Mass Effect 3, and offers a unique perspective as a soldier during one of his species' final hours fighting against the Reapers. But alas, Javik is not the only member of his species who is still alive during the 22nd century. Well, he, he sort of is, but not really. Okay, here's the thing. As we learn in Mass Effect 2, the downfall of the Prothean Empire was not the Reaper's final blow to the species. Members of the Prothean species were indoctrinated with the express purpose of becoming a slave race. Over time, these Protheans lost much of their higher mental function, prompting the Reapers to install cybernetic upgrades. After several cloned generations, the Reapers eventually decided to genetically rewrite these Protheans, transforming them into an entirely new species the Collectors. Rarely seen and considered by many to be a myth, the Collectors reside in a space station in the galactic core and only accessible through the Omega-4 relay. Over the course of 50,000 years, the Collectors periodically travel to the Terminus systems to acquire seemingly unimportant items or particular numbers of individuals. What are their reasons for this? Well, we don't know all the answers, but in any event, I may explore the Collectors and Reapers in more detail in future videos. Hopefully this video has demonstrated why the Protheans are one of the most biologically unique humanoid aliens in Mass Effect. It's a shame that Javik was not included as a squad mate in the Mass Effect 3 base game at launch, instead being made a Day 1 DLC, even though his presence is quite crucial to the story of Mass Effect 3. But with his default inclusion in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, there's been a renewed interest in Javik and the Protheans. So I hope this video demonstrated the basis for many aspects of their biology. As far as how plausible they are for an alien race, well, you know what they say. We don't know if bipedal humanoid aliens would be the norm there's reason to believe that they are very likely not. But in the context of Mass Effect, I quite enjoy the decisions made in this alien's design. They're familiar enough to be at least somewhat relatable, but alien enough that we can buy that they're from a different planet. And as far as how the mass relays helped them maintain their galactic empire, well, the mechanics of FTL in the Mass Effect universe is also probably deserving of its own video. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads, and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I should go.